Um, welcome to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast, episode 100. The uh, uh, Today we have Roger Jönsson with us. Uh, uh, one of the, I, I would say, uh, perhaps not the most known in the media, but those who are in the hockey cultures know a lot about Roger. And, and, and in my opinion, um, one of the one of the best uh, GMs out there uh, in terms of what really matters. So welcome to the Ho- Hockey pa- Podcast. Thank you very much. I'm flattered. This episode is brought to you by Scandlux, your home for Scandinavian luxury products for the U.S. market. You can find us at scandlux.com. Yeah, yeah well, I've been I've been following you for a while from from a side, and I've watched uh kind of how and i want to talk about that really the subject of because you're in Olofström, which is not the biggest metropolitan area not a hockey mecca and what does it take to build a hockey program from ground up in a small town uh is kind of the subject that i want to talk about um um yeah. But 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 for those who don't know, we've had some other people. We've had Yuel Shinander who came through your program on last year, and uh, that's kind of where I started looking at Ulf Strum and who are these people and what makes them successful. And then uh, I've been following kind of uh, from a, a side watching it a little bit. But let's go back a little bit. Uh, so where where first of all, where is Ulf Strum in Sweden? For those who don't know. Holström is a small uh, town village, uh, about one and a half hour from Malmö in the south. Um, it's a it's a small town. Uh, Volvo uh, has a big factory here, so so um, that's what we come from. We are from the industrial families, uh, work hard, uh, and I would say that there is uh, some hockey culture here. Um, they had they started the, the club in 1970 and uh, they had some success uh, there a uh, lot of people are interested and uh, we have some players that come from Olofström that uh, that made it and went all the way so uh, even though the last couple of years the men's team has been struggling a little bit but um 10 years ago 15 years ago they were in Allsvenskan and and um, knocking on the door to Allsvenskan a couple of times so um there's still some hockey culture i think absolutely uh, even, though, even though it's a small city the, um, the problem we have now is that we don't have enough uh, players who start playing hockey and um, when they're young they, we have floorball in a as we call it in sweden that that is big we have soccer and uh, stuff like that so so um and and generally the the hockey population is centered to, to the bigger city there are some smaller city like Leksander you come from and uh, Tingsryd and small towns like that that's still going on and are still strong but uh, yeah, we have problems recruiting young kids yeah so so our hockey gymnasium is is or our hockey academy is um, standing out uh, from the rest of the 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 club because we have um, um yeah we, we have a good junior 18 team and, and a junior 20 team and we have a good cooperation with the school uh, and the, the the city that makes us uh, kind of uh, uh, develop and, and set the program as we would like. Uh, we have, uh, I, w- I wouldn't say free hands, but we are not tied. Um, if you are a new gymnasium, you have um, certain rules that you have to apply to. Uh, we can... We can set our agenda a little bit from from how we would like to have it, and we practice only during the days. We have no evening practices, so all our uh, practices and sessions are scheduled during the day. So we have good facilities. Everybody living in the same building. For well, instance, so. for, for those who follow you, El uh in and in his uh, off ice training, he always has this. I don't know where he's training, but it's in a very nice facility. So I think that's not necessarily. There at the school, right? That's at a, at no, a no, local gym. No, that's the gym. He's at the gym. Yeah, it looks really nice. But at the same time, uh, the ice facilities are really nice there too. Um, but let's go back a little bit because you're from there from from beginning in Blekinge. On so so it's on the east coast, going 
uh, going up the coast from from Malmö, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've actually never been to Olofström. I don't think, um, you know, I'm, I'm from Lexan, and it's really it's pretty far far from Lexan. But but you know, like all of these small towns in Sweden, they all have their kind of common common strokes. But but you grew up around there, right? Yeah, I'm uh, from Olofström. I was born here. I played uh, hockey here uh, until I was. Uh, 17 18 years old i uh, i played uh, men's hockey when i was 15 i was up early uh, we had some kids in my age that uh, that were really good we had uh, a guy named Reiner Rauhala born 73 same age as me my classmate he he went Sertelia. to Lexan did he play in Sertelia? no Lex- no Lexan he went Lexan. to Lexan okay and played, right. played world juniors with uh, Forsberg and Neslund and those guys and and so at that time, you didn't really have the the social media. You didn't even you, you didn't know so much about the rest of Sweden, how good everybody was or what the standard was. So, but Reiner was probably the best fifteen year old in Sweden at the time. So that was the standard when we practices. So so he he helped a lot of guys here because he was that good. So I moved to Malmo when I was uh, eighteen, became a uh, um, one year case, they call it in English. Ett uh, årsfall in Sweden. I, I couldn't play for a year because the, at that time you had to have uh, you have to agree there was uh, money involved between the clubs. You have to buy the players before Bosman uh, came. So they couldn't agree, so they they uh, banned me for a year, which was sad at the uh, time when you were eighteen years old and made a big step. So then I played like. 17 years professional Alsvenskan NHL and uh, I finished with three years in in France in Grenoble um, great time um, and then I started when I finished play I, I got an offer from uh, my hometown to become the the, the GM um, so that's where my other career started uh, as a as a coach and GM yeah what, and then and then a stint too with the being the GM in Oskarshamn as well. Yeah, I was uh, three years in in Olofström as a GM, and uh, then I went to Oskarshamn and was there for seven years, and uh, went back home after that, and and have the the hockey academy here in uh, in Olofström the last six years. So, yeah, what is it about? And and of course, so the 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 bigger towns that are around you, perhaps that are kind of. And, and this is a common theme, too, in Sweden, where you have these smaller towns, smaller clubs, and then you have sometimes uh, another smaller town but or maybe a bigger town, but they have a bigger club, so to speak. So you do have Oskarshamn, which is close. Of course, they just, yeah. got, they just got relegated, but they've been up in the SHL. But then you have Kalskruna, which has been yeah. kind of the would, – would Kalskruna be the closest – in the past, big team, or I guess Malmö? Uh... Yeah, things that I would say is the most, uh, because it's only half an hour from from Olofström, that um, they were good in the like 70s and the 80s, and they've been good ever since. Like uh, It's it's kind of like Leksand. It's a very small city, and uh, they always produce good hockey players. They play in the Allsvenskan, yep. which is a good level and a good league, so that I would say would be the closest. You had Murum, uh, twenty minutes from here. That, uh, like historically seen, they've, they've been a good team. Like they played Allsvenskan for eighteen, twenty years in a row. I think before they went down, they played Division One now. So yeah, yes. there's a lot of small clubs. You got Kristianstad uh, close as well. So there's a lot of clubs around, uh, and the area in in the south here is. Um, uh, we have a lot of Allsvenskan clubs and we have SHL clubs, so um, it's it's uh, it's a good place to to go up as a junior. There's yeah. a lot of place to go if you and you get noticed if you play well. Yeah. So explain kind of the difference. So so you have that you have an elite team. You have a J20. You have a J18. You got the youth organization like most clubs. Yeah. But yeah. like in Tingsryd and Malmö, uh, that are. NIU, you are a LIU. Explain the difference 
for those who don't know between an NIU and an LIU, and then give your opinion on the advantages and the disadvantages of being an LIU. Yeah, first of all, it's it's uh, when you go to school and you combine hockey with with school, you have you 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 get four hundred points uh, for studying uh, and. IU, you get 300 if you study a, a LIU. So so that's the difference when it comes to school. The other one is that it's kind of a certification that says that you are about to have a certain standard uh, when you are a new. Um, and you are um, when you apply as a as a 15 year old to go to a hockey gymnasium, you, you you can choose four options. And all the new gymnasium are there, so you can choose four of them, and they're all on the same site, and they're all on the same, um, how you say, under the same umbrella. Yeah. The the Liu is by themselves; uh, they don't have any any rules from the federations or stuff like that. Like they they can build the organization and they can practice a little bit um, how they want. So there there are some really good Liu gymnasium that have good facilities and good coaches and. And stuff like that, but uh, uh, Niu is like it, it's um, everybody wants to go when you're a kid, everybody wants to go there, and not everybody is there. So, if you're not a if you're not a prioritized player, if you're not the uh, top top uh, in your age group at the time when you're 15 years old, and like I always tell that's the first thing I tell everybody that comes here because we invite all the players that we would like to see. We meet, we meet them. They can, they can come here and practice. And we try to tell them that 80% of, of the players who reach SHL or top Alsanskan uh, do it when they're 24 years old. So the question is, what do you do until you're 24 years old? Like everybody can't, everybody can't be Rasmus Dalin or Lucas Raymond that goes straight from the, the, the top, junior level and straight into SHL and straight into NHL uh, most people have to try different path or ways so that's what we try to tell them you need to be in a good environment you need to practice well and um, if you go to the top clubs like Malmö, Rögle, Vekko, uh, HV it, you have to be a prioritized player like you if you're a skilled player you need to play power play if you're a skilled player you need to play in the top lines and if you're not uh, you don't get uh, the same amount of love from the coaches and the staff, yep. and it's yep. a hard way to 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 go through. Um, so, for this year example, I have um, I have six players in my team that signed for uh, Vekhu and Rögle, top teams, uh, which means that they they only played junior eighteen division one, but still at their last year they can play uh, junior twenty national. So, it it shows that. The, the 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 level of the league is is not the biggest uh, thing. You need to be in a good environment. You need to practice good. You need to play. You need to learn how to play, and especially learn how to play with the puck. Um, because when you come up to play men's hockey or or top level junior, you need to play to so be able let, to play. So so let me throw a word at you that at you that that I think is an important. I had this uh, conversation a lot with. Uh, with Urban Umark before about, you know, for the young... I'm sorry? Uh, he's a former teammate of mine. Urban. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And and we had this conversation about, you know, not every player is a Rasmus Dalin, and the right fit for a Rasmus Dalin is to be at that level, but not every play, everybody develops physically and, and, and skill-wise at different levels. But, but when I say the right fit... You know, so so I think it's good that there are different options for and, and it's not a cookie cutter. Uh, so ex explore that kind of philosophy of finding the right fit. So what is the right fit for a player that comes to a to to Olaf Strom? First of all, uh, hockey is uh, is fast today. It goes really fast out there. If you play top level, Sweden, Canada, uh, Finland, or or the top leagues, it, it goes really fast. Even the juniors play at a high speed level today. So you need to have the tools. Um, you need to have the tools to to be able to play in that speed. 
uh, that there is today. Uh, so, so basically, what we focus on is to develop all your tools. Um, then we have to learn them how to play. Uh, it's difficult to learn somebody how to, to play in a top level if you don't have the tools. It's easier to learn somebody who has the tools to play hockey because yeah. that's that is a big discuss- discussion today because I also have during the summer I, I run my like hockey schools and academies and, and we, we do skills sessions and we have everything from, from NHL players down to, to kids that, that work on their their um, their own game like their, yep. their tools um, and it's 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 not uh, this or that like you can't choose but if you can choose it's better to have the tools and then also learn how to play. The big discussion is today that everybody is a selfish player, they're egoist, they're, they only care about themselves because they have uh, been on skills coaches and skill sessions. And so it's a big debate today. And, and I think that we, can, we try to combine. We do a lot of skills session here in Olostra and we focus on developing each player because if I'm going to have a good junior 20 team, they need to develop because I can't, kick out players after one year and say, no, you're not good enough. Uh, we take somebody else because they don't line up to me uh, in the same way to do for Vecco or Malmö. Yep. So we need to develop every player we got or get. And um, then you also need to learn how to play. So so we have a playbook. Uh, it's uh, We play with puck possession. Um, so so we we really need the guys to to be able to play in a high speed and and, and to play with the puck. Yeah. Uh, so when we send players to Vecco, Rögle or Malmö to practice now, um, they, they they have no problems to play a game in the junior like national junior twenty in the top level um, because they know how to play. And I think the problem that we have today in Swedish hockey is that we we push everybody at a young age to play at a level that they're not really uh, fit for. Yes. Uh, and and we, we have the Junior 18 uh, region, which we were played this year. Uh, we were newcomers and, and stuff like that, but it, and it's a tough, tough league, really tough. Yep. But it's getting younger and younger because they're pushing U16 players up. Um, agents, coaches, parents, uh, national teams, uh, coaches push everybody up. Uh, the junior 20 is younger than ever. There are like 10, 15 players, some games that are born for to play junior 18 that plays junior 20. Yep. Uh, so the junior 20 level is not good enough, if you ask me. Yep. Uh, because we don't have any, we don't have enough of. Um, the, the last uh, this year is the zero fours that are the last year that they can play junior twenty, so yep. they kick them a little bit too early. They move uh, the younger players up, and if you ask the coaches, um, they probably will say that uh, the national teams coaches are calling and they ask about players and they say, um, "Do you have anybody that's good?" Yeah, we have one player, or they, and they say, uh, "Yeah, but he doesn't play junior twenty. Yeah, no, but he's a good player and. It's, it seems like they have, and that makes all the coaches to push up the good players because otherwise they're not they're not going to play the national team, and and it's a it's a spiral that's uh, spinning too fast, and and um, we don't take care of the um, the overage players. Yeah. So, a- but if you're a if you're a let's say not a top player, let's say you're a late bloomer, and and then you are put in a position that is, and, and you know everybody wants to play at the at the top level, but you're just not a top level. You are what you are. What happens then to the development when you are, you're 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 on a team that is above your level versus being at the right level, whatever that right level may be, whether that's Division Two, II, Division One, or 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 region or national. Yeah. I think you stop developing because you're, and and that makes um, if you look at the, the past couple of years when when we could get better and better players in our organization, um, so when they go out to to be senior players, they they played the last year, they are competing for the same spots that a lot of the players that play um, at top level 
even though we are on the second level. Yep. Uh, and 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 I think they get good jobs in Division One uh, for starts when they start playing um, before some of the players that, that went to to the NIU because they play power play, they play PK, they play the top line, they play the last two minutes of a game when we're leading, they play the last two minutes when we had to score a goal. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think the environment is uh, is a little bit calmer, um, like the and and a lot of the times like the the, the SHL teams they bring in young coaches for junior eighteen and U sixteen and junior twenty. They're young and they're ambitious. Uh, they want to get coach in the be coaches in the SHL in the future, uh, but their experience is is not that big. And and for me, I'm I'm a better coach and better GM now than I was when I was in Oskarshamn because I know more. I met yep. more people. I I went to more skills ca- camp with my kids and see another good uh, developer uh, do stuff that I think that, oh, God, you can do like that. And and I, I bring it with me and, and try to develop it and and, and be better at my job. Um, I have kids of my own, uh, which is a, an advantage when you uh, have young kids and young players that move, uh, sometimes they move like four or five hours away from home to live here uh, without their parents. Things well, happen I'm- in life. And, and everything from you, you're going to make school, uh, you got to play well. Um, sometimes bad things happen. Some Somebody in the family gets sick, your girlfriend breaks up, uh, school is not working as, as you think, you get pressure. And I think in an environment like all of Sturm, it's a little bit more easier to collect and to uh, help uh, players that are, yeah, facing problems, uh, yeah. but in 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 an elite environment, uh, there's always always somebody is knocking at the door. That okay, we push him away. He's not ready. We take him out, and then new guys come. So, well, it, it, of- and I've seen that too. Like so, at, with the in the NIU's, and there's a lot of money that goes that is at stake at the NIU's too. And and so if you are if you are not it, it doesn't take very long you don't have that that leash is not very long for you uh and if you are not performing you're gonna be someone else is gonna take your spot and what does that then do to your confidence and and i've seen it then where where coaches are just not they're gonna they're gonna give the love and the attention to the one that is coming up and 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 I get it. I think that's just the way it is. And I'm not yeah. saying that that's uh, on the other hand, I, I don't know if that's a bad thing to a certain degree as well. It's just a caution for those who are, you know, teetering on the edge there. And do you, and, 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 and you're making this choice of, you know, do I accept this position to be on that top team and be in a fourth liner and maybe a healthy scratch, or do I rather be a main guy so let's say you're a you're J18 and 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 uh, you know you could get in here, but I'm going to get a really big role over here. The other part that I wanted to get your opinion on, which I think is a huge advantage in the Swedish system ver- versus over here in the U.S. or Canada, is the ability in one of these smaller clubs to play at multiple levels. So yeah. kid coming in uh, from the outside. Tool of Strum, you're going to, and but they are really, really good. And now you're coming in as a first year J18. If they are good, there's no restrictions for them to play on the J20. Uh, there's no restrictions for them to practice with J20 and maybe even to practice with the men's elite team, right? How does that, what, how, but, but that's a lot of, for you as the general manager coach, how do you weigh that opportunity, that burden? And you're also then sitting someone else. There's only so many, only so many spots. Yeah, uh, true. Uh, and and the fact that you're bringing it up is is uh, exactly how we we work uh, because we are um, first of all we we've been complaining and and um, trying to get um, the Swedish Federation to. To understand that, in in even if you don't play top level, you need to have more games 
more good games and more games. If you play junior 20 national, you play about, I would say, around 55 to 60 games a year. If you play region, where we play, we, you play 30 yeah. uh, plus playoff. That, that's half. And if you play junior 20 division one, you play 20, 25 yeah. or something. And and how can you even if when they're fifteen years old they are competing for the same spot at HV or Vecchio, and there's so little difference between them at the moment. Maybe physical development, maybe mentality, or something that should make them choose the other guy. So one of the guys come to me, and if I'm gonna make him practice as hard as much as the guy who goes to to HV. And he needs to play as much games as the guy who plays in HV in order to to become as good as him when they are 20, or as we say, we say 24. We look at 24 years old. That's what the aim is. So that's why we we the junior we have we have spots. We save spots in the junior 20 teams for the junior 18. We save spots in the men's team for the junior 20 guys. So we try to get everybody up to 50 games at least, or a lot of the players. Not everybody can, but the the best players are playing like sixty games. Um, and if you play, if you're a junior eighteen guy and you play junior twenty, you play junior eighteen as well. You don't jump over uh, because we need the both of the games. So some yeah. of the guys they play four games a week, which is good. Uh, yeah. We also have junior eighteen guys who have that once a week. We have um, we have a spot for them to to practice with the men's team. Just because it's 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 good, yeah. Uh, they're big, they're stronger. Uh, some of the players that play Division Two, it it sounds like terrible Division Two, but some of the players play the SHL. Yeah, and they they they, they don't compete anymore, but they still like to play and they still have a good level. So, for our young kids to be around and to practice with the men's team is is good and it's developing. Uh, so. That's true. They, our best players play ju- both junior 18, junior 20, and they play men's team. Yeah. Well, and and I know you're a humble guy, but I want to talk about kind of the successes that that I've watched just in the last few years. So when I first started watching Ulufström, J18 was in Division One. Yeah. Now they moved up, and they're in they're in the top. They're in region, right? Yeah, but we moved out again. Oh, you moved out again. Okay. Yeah, we- we uh, we moved out again, so we're we're back and forwards now. Yep, but, and then, but still, still. And then J twenty, and I mean, I guess that was also kind of that core group of of the O five group that went up, took it from Division one into to region. Those guys moved up into into uh, J twenty and uh, was in the you know, fighting for a spot. I mean, how far did you guys get in the J20 playoff? I mean, it was... To the final to, to the final round, uh, the final playoff three. Uh, we lost against Tyrus, uh, the, the the final, the best out of three. We lost the third game there. Yeah. It was tight. I mean... It... Yeah, great. And I mean, for to take it from... because uh, So, J20, were they in Division One not too long ago as well? Yeah, yeah two years ago. So, so you almost went from two years ago in Division One, almost leapfrogging your way into J twenty National, which would have been. I mean, if if that would have happened, that would have turned some heads. You probably turned some heads anyway, but but, so that core. So so what you're talking about is that core group of players. You're now graduating into Vecchio and Hovikutet and. Yeah, and, and if, if the 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 best uh, players we had this year is is born zero five, so yep. they have one near year to play. So if we would have kept those guys, everybody decided we stay in Olostrum, then we have then we would have an even better shot at at, uh, at moving up this so, year. But but still still it's it's you have to find your or or uh, find your way in the food chain uh, as well. Like we we. We are happy. Uh, like I, I talked to Vecchio, I talked to Rögle, uh to, to like try try this guy and invite him for a practice. It makes us look good, even if it's it's hard to let good players go that could stay. But it's 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 our job to to develop good players. Uh, when they come, we we say we promise them that we will do everything we can to. Olofström is not an end station. Uh, it's it's a board to to get to some place better 
Well, I mean, so is that, does that come with, I mean, I know, I know there's different emotions as a general manager to, to, to say that, right. That, but isn't it also kind of a, that's just reality. It is, it is. And it's uh, the way the Swedish system is built as well, that uh, it, it's, it's possible to move up. Uh, it's possible for smaller clubs to, to, to play in SHL. It's, uh, possible for Oscar Sam to play SHL even though it's a small town and nobody thought it would be, be possible. So uh, and even for juniors, you have the chance to move up, you have the chance to move down. And and I think that making like six players now leave to to top level uh, makes the younger players that come in uh, and and the, the best part of, of this is that they play junior 18 division one when they yeah. came. So, so yeah. it, it makes like you can play division one and still make the top level when you're 19. And how many of those guys were in TV puck, uh, in the TV puck tournament? Uh, or maybe I should I, say how many of them were not? Uh, I would say that, uh, I gotta think, uh, now it makes me look bad because I have to say that everybody was in the TV puck. Yeah, I would like, okay. Would like to have me for answering something else there, but yeah, uh, it's breaking uh, like uh, five of them is for breaking and and it's we have around fifty players for for each um, each year, so so it's not that difficult to make. Okay, uh, and, and and my point and my point that I'm trying to make too is that just because you does, I mean, how, I don't know how many people I've talked to that that you know, yeah, they were the last cut, didn't make TV puck, and now they're playing at at Hokietan or Alsvenskan or playing college in the U S or, you know, and loving, you know, it, it doesn't end because you didn't make the, 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 the TV puck tournament. Uh, it doesn't end because you didn't get into, to NIU. But my point to all of this is like, what a, what a, what better way, what better recruiting, campaign to be able to say are you a player that really wants to develop and and that what that becomes better good enough that you're going to be able to then be be in a position to play at the j20 national and then wherever wherever yeah. else you should come here come to us yeah and that's what we try. Uh, we, we, tr we try to push for that and we try we know that we we because we have let's say around 150 applications every year for every age group and we bring in 12 so we still have a, a, a certain amount to, to choose from but not all of the 150 choose us in the end because yeah. they have other clubs that that uh, wants them as well but we, we really try to select um, the players from where we can see that this guy is gonna he, he, he could be a hockey player because you can see that he has some moves or skill set or mindset and you can see that he he can play but he maybe be we got one guy now who's born zero four that had an amazing like he's 195 now but he was like the smallest guy <laughs> ever when he came in and, and like one 150 centimeters and and like 50 kilos really really small you look at the pictures from him when he started you're like it's not the same guy and you can see that his dad was his dad was like big you can see that he's going to be big but he's he, he didn't have have a chance to get into one of the bigger gymnasiums when he was 15 because his physics was just not there and it's so nice to see because he had a skill set Oh, he was like wonderful when you saw him on the skills session. So you can see that he, he, he's going to be a hockey player if he ends up in a good environment and keeps playing. So, and he is, he, he plays well. Yeah. And I think that what, and let, let's round out with this too. What about the mindset? Okay. You got it. You got to have to have the skills and you have to be able to be at a, if you got a hundred play, players that you're choosing for, for t 12 spots, what is the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of have you as Shinanda in the back of my mind, but like, what are the mindset that you that you're looking for, um, uh, for for what's the right fit in Olafström? I would say you as Shinanda is is uh, like the perfect fit because he's so committed, and that's one of the problems when you're when you're not choosing from the top shelf of of players at each age group. Um, the the 
some of the guys that are skilled and good, but they they come from smaller clubs and and they don't really know what um what is it to be elite. Yeah. Uh, what what does it take to 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 be as good as the guys in HV? Um, everything from from excuses uh, why I shouldn't practice to um, the shock when you come that oh do we have to practice this much because I never did I played soccer in the summer and I did that and that and that so um, I think that's the most difficult part is to get everybody uh, to have the mindset that you would Shinander had when he came that I'm going to do everything whatever it takes to be <laughs> as good as I can be and I'm not going to cheat I'm, I'm going to work even harder and that's the most difficult uh, task that we have, I think, to, to get everybody in that mindset because they don't have it when they come. Yeah. Yeah. And some, I, I think, I mean, I I remember growing up, people that are growing up and I was like, this guy's got the, 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 the eye of the eye of the tiger attitude. And, and I think some of that comes whether it's genetically or, or, or it, it certainly is a, is a trait that some have more natural than others. Um, yeah. but I do think that the whole, uh, iron sharpens iron and being in an environment where you can, when you are competing in practice, uh, Umar and I had this conversation about like, my, uh, when, when Forsberg and Nasland was coming up together in Mudo, you know, that's why they, there was no surprise that those guys became the best in the world because they practiced harder than anybody, not because Forsberg's dad was such a good coach. They were, they were competing in everything they did every day and games were like a cakewalk for them and yeah. they had more competition and there were probably, you know, fist fights and, and, and people crying, um, because they hate to lose, you know, against each other. Um, so uh, I, I totally agree. And, and, and I can see. A huge difference between a certain age group in 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 because I have four age group uh, who, who I uh, control or have uh, practicing, and I can see the difference between the the ones that succeed and the ones that move forward and uh, gets big, better and better jobs. Those groups are competing like really really good um, at the practices. They're uh, well, pushing other they're they're um, yelling at each other sometimes and and uh, that's also a thing you have to learn to 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 know how to take and talk to other players but the environment that they have is that they they go all in and then you have them some of the other age group that they are talented but they don't have that mindset and they don't have the the group that pushes one another to to, to the limits where you say that i'm i'm never going to lose this but, even if but- it's practice but isn't it also that's kind of where your experience and the continuity that you've been able to create that you can now recognize those things and make adjustments and facilitate that environment uh, proactively or reactively, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can do that. And I can see um, when we don't play as as well as we should. Well, uh, often and most of the times it's because we don't compete enough. Yeah. Uh, so. And that's the like I have a son that plays um, a place in uh, in Canada. Played in this Le- year in Canada. Lethbridge, right? Yeah, in Lethbridge, and uh, I I've been over there uh, um, like three or four times, and I watched them practice, and not one time have I seen them battling. They don't battle at practice, but when they play, they battle like hell. Huh. Uh, so the, the I I guess it's like mindsets from when they're young in Canada that. Everybody knows it. If, if you're going to play, you have to battle. But they don't need it in practice. In Sweden, we we, we brought up with that everybody everybody is the same. Everybody plays the the same amount. Everybody has the same shifts. Uh, uh, everybody is the same. Uh, they don't have to compete. But all of a sudden, when you're 16 years old, you have to compete, and then you have to do it in practice. And then the coaches have to make drills that. Uh, they have to compete. Yep. Uh, and and in Canada, that's what's the first thing that struck me that they, they don't have to do it because they're already there. Yeah. They- there there's a reason why they produce the uh the top J twenty team year after year after year. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, and the level is crazy. So so I, I'm 
I can understand. I watch so many games there right now, so and I can see how they can go from uh, juniors right into play NHL because yeah. the level is so high. Yeah. Well, it's got to... one thing I think that we should look um, the Swedish um, coaches and and clubs should look at uh, the the WHL or OHL how they work with because they they make the players stay they play junior hockey they don't play men's hockey they don't push 18 year old guy up to SHL too early because we don't have any we don't have any player in in uh, junior national that scores 100 points because the best players are playing 8 to 10 minutes in SHL instead and instead of playing 30 minutes in in a top uh, level juniors because everybody that's why we talked about it in the beginning we're pushing everybody up yep too early um well it, it's funny because i've had that conversation with the swedish hockey federation and it's one of the at least this past year there was one of the initiatives you know one of the strategic initiative was the compete we want to we don't want to just make it to the quarterfinal and lose with the national team we want to compete have i seen any change in that not to sound too critical but from i'm just a fruit inspector and i haven't seen it um, I haven't seen oh, a change, you know. I agree, and 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 the 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 one that we're lacking, if we the, the players that we send to to national hockey league and and uh, top leagues are not the most skilled players. The, the, the most skilled players are coming from US or Canada at the moment, and I think it's because we send them up too early. They play a, a system hockey in Sweden, uh, men's hockey, where it's points are more important than development and. I think we need to to look in the mirror a little bit and see if we can uh, change some things. Then we need to change the way that we that we handle players from 17, 18 years old until the twenty twenty one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Well, we could talk for hours on this. Uh, it's been yeah. great. I've been chasing you for a while, and finally, I got you on at episode one hundred here. And uh, and uh, huge admirer. Uh, we're going to continue to kind of keep you. Uh, under the radar here and and focus on this little town Olofström the Steelers is the nickname the Steelers. Yeah. and uh All thanks right. th thanks for coming on uh, last last thing we do um I always ask this uh, two more things I almost forgot we always ask this to the um and this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge perhaps uh for you since sometimes we have the younger guy on here um uh, I just had Felicia Frank, who I know you, her brother played yeah. for you, uh, yeah. Lucas. But but I always ask the guest, you met yourself at 17. And uh, what advice would you give to yourself, things you know now that you didn't know back then? Uh, oh, I know exactly what that would be like. Work harder. Okay. Oh, my God. I was so lazy. Uh, I don't know anybody who knew me at, when I was 17, 18 years old you had tons of talents but didn't know come from that's that's one of the problems you come from a small town uh you don't know yeah you don't know how it's be you don't know how it uh you don't know how peter forsberg and marcus nelson was practicing when i was 17 18 if, if i would have known maybe i would have done differently but yeah. um well, somebody you know, kicked me. well you know now right you know yeah, now I know. Oh, I know all the shortcuts <laughs> All right, last thing, we have a partnership with TargetAid.com. TargetAid has been getting a lot of notoriety in Sweden for being a fundraising platform. We're, we have a presence there. We're grateful for that. And it gives us the opportunity to kind of share um, their initiative, which is um, that we share here, and that is the team in my heart. I've got a feeling it's a pretty easy one for you, but Klubben i Mitjata, which one is it for, for, for Roger Jönsson? Uh, of course, it's it's uh, Olof Strom um, started here and uh, went away for for eighteen twenty years and and came back and came back twice uh, as a GM and now as a coach. So um, that's uh, would be the club in Imitjata for me. Yeah, well, I I uh, I appreciate that, and we'll make sure that that um, we'll we'll get some some content out for 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 target aid and, and uh, hopefully we can help in, with our little spot in the hockey world as well. Thanks for coming yeah. on. We'll stay in touch for sure. And uh, I'm sure you got more hockey tonight or is it done for today? 
it's done for the day. I have my kids at home, and uh, my my son from Lethbridge came home a, a week ago as well. So uh, we spent some time with the family. Um, it's gonna be nice. Sounds good. Well, wish him well, and uh, we'll stay in touch for sure. Thanks. Thank you.